I've been having these weird thoughts lately. Like, is any of this for real? Or not? Dreams have always been at the core of Kingdom Hearts. In the intro of the very first game, the first ever time we see Sora, he is sleeping. He awakens and falls into slumber throughout the intro many times. The intro ends with Sora waking in a dive to the heart, which we know confirmed to be in a dream, thus within the realm of sleep. Dreams have always been there. And inevitably with dreams come nightmares. This concept wasn't fully realized until the release of Dream Drop Distance back in 2012, mostly setting aside the villainous factions of Heartless and Nobodies, and instead bringing in the fresh new ideas that are Dream Eaters. The two types of Dream Eaters being Spirits, which are very good boys, and Nightmares, which are not so much. Spirits eat the bad dreams, and Nightmares make them. Classic yin and yang stuff here. But today, I wanted to share something really fascinating I've been kind of obsessing over, and it's the very concept of nightmares and how they might expand the Kingdom Hearts universe in a way which we cannot even comprehend. In Dream Drop Distance, Sora and Riku traverse through the sleeping world in order to pass the test for the Mark of Mastery. What is a sleeping world? Well, just in case you might not know, let's use the world of Neverland as an example. Neverland is a world like any other in Kingdom Hearts. But if Neverland were to be completely engulfed by darkness, it would sink into the dark realm and thus lie dormant. Simple enough, but worlds have hearts, and people do too, and those hearts can dream. The sleeping worlds and the dreams that accompany them are what we know as the realm of sleep. Dream eaters being the denizens of dreams themselves can traverse through the realm of sleep, but other beings we know and love such as the heartless or unversed cannot. Why am I prefacing all of this? Well, let's see what Chirithi says to Sora in the final world. You've wandered here more than once before on your visits to the Station of Awakening, but I let that slide. The edges of sleep and death touch, and one can't help the occasional crossover. Sleep and death are two sides of the same coin. Keep note of this, as this is imperative going forward. The Chirithi is actually the first ever known Dream Eater created in a flask by the Master of Masters himself. Both Spirit and Nightmare Dream Eaters were created and conjured from darkness. The concept of all life beginning in darkness isn't especially new to the series, and this fact is bluntly settled by Chirithi itself. This very notion was actually the start of something game-changing for the lore of the series, as before this point, darkness was always associated with evil and malice. So if Spirit Dream Eaters are so friendly and adorable despite being from the dark, then it paints darkness as being merely misguided and abused, rather than inherently bad. The cutscene where the Master explains the creation of Chirithi portrays this very idea. Oh, right. Before I forget... If a wielder is overcome by malice, or rather, if their heart is tainted by darkness, their adorable little spirit will turn dark and become a nightmare. Chirithis are connected, or rather chained, to a Keyblade wielder. So if the Keyblade wielder falls to darkness or malice, then so too will the Chirithi, thus exploiting and abusing the inherently dark nature of Dream Eaters themselves. A very new and elusive plot mechanic from Key, Unchained Key and Union Cross, is something we know as the Unchained Realm. We will talk about this Unchained Realm a little bit later. But long story short, the Unchained Realm and being in the Unchained State seems to correlate exceedingly so with Dream Eaters and the Realm of Sleep. But we're not going to go ham on this subject, as we don't actually know too much about this right now. So, let's go back to Sleeping World for a bit. Remember how a world sinking into the darkness submits it to sleep? This indicates a direct connection between the Realm of Darkness and the Realm of Sleep. But with Kingdom Hearts 3 and Chirithi's interaction with Sora in the final world, we know that sleep and death are closely related. The final world is essentially purgatory, where hearts cling to the realm of sleep itself in order to refrain from passing on. The cascading stars who reside in the final world are almost like ghosts of people long gone. So the entire premise of this theory surrounds these three realms. Darkness, sleep, and death. 
are all blatantly connected. So we have our sleeping worlds and dream eaters. Cool. Now that I've set the stage, I want to discuss the intrinsic design elements of the Kingdom Hearts series known as colors, and even how Dream Eaters, specifically Nightmares, might have a lot more going on than we may suspect with the color red. Color has always been used to portray a specific theme or alignment. Those who are associated with the darkness more than likely have yellow eyes. Xehanort and his vessels all bear yellow eyes, along with each and every Heartless. Yes, every single one. The color scheme for Heartless is simple, primarily black with yellow eyes. As a contrast to this, those on the side of light usually have blue eyes, but some may vary. The strange cases of the eye color rule are with the Foretellers, as they actually carry some inconsistency throughout time, where their eye colors change. Some are yellow, Ira is seen having red, then other times they're blue. To be honest, these are just masks and not the eye colors of the people themselves, but I still don't know what's going on here. Anyway, one rule is never broken. The yellow eyes of the Heartless. Only those on the side of darkness don the yellow eyes. Now, I want to compare them to Dream Eaters, whom I've stated previously to also be creatures conjured from the dark. The spirit Dream Eaters also sport these same yellow eyes. Pure Blood Heartless originate from the Dark Realm and the darkness within people's hearts. In turn, Dream Eaters can only appear and traverse within the realm of sleep. These two realms are connected. But, according to Yen Sid, Heartless cannot submerge into the sleeping realm and Dream Eaters cannot transcend beyond it. They still sleep cut off from all outside channels. Not even the Heartless can enter. Okay. However, Nightmares have one very important difference. Their eyes are red. All Heartless have yellow eyes without exception, but Nightmares, all of them have red eyes. In fact, red is the primary color associated with the concept of sleep. Anywhere from light pink to magenta to even purple, the shades of red have been consistently related to nightmares and the realm of sleep. For example, the portals in which we traverse through and from sleeping worlds are all pinkish red, just like the title of Dream Drop Distance itself. And aside from the red eyes, all nightmare creatures seen in the game are primarily accented with dark purple. If you want to understand more about portals, I'd highly recommend checking out the secret reports along with all of their other amazing theories. So, what have we established? Heartless have yellow eyes and are associated with dark, and Nightmares have red eyes and are associated with sleep. But of course, we can't forget about the Unversed here. They also have red eyes, but as far as we know, they're strictly connected to the negative emotions of Venetus, who is a pure form of darkness and seeming to be a lot more ancient than we knew before. But, aren't we forgetting about someone? In Kingdom Hearts Span, of 20 long years, we haven't seen an original human character with red eyes. Until now. And he's of course going to be the most sleep-connected character of all. So yeah, the obvious. His name is Night Sky, with the night representing darkness and at night time you sleep. In the secret ending named Yuzora, Rika was seen wandering through the streets of Quadratum with a version of Somnus playing and Somnus is Latin for sleep. In fact, the only reason Riku was there was because he had visions in his dreams of being watched in a city with tall buildings. And to actually get to Quadratum, he needs to go to the final world where sleep and death touch, only to open a red portal synonymous with traversing sleeping worlds. After Sora abuses the power of waking, he is sent to a dark version of the final world where he meets Yazora. After winning the battle, Yazora wakes in the backseat of a car alluding to the possibility that he was actually asleep the entire time. With Sora and Yozora being parallels, and Sora abusing the power of waking, then Yozora could have dominion over something akin to a power of sleep. Isn't it strange how the only human character with a red eye is also connected to sleep and dreams more than anyone? The design of Yozora's sleeve indicates a skull and crossbones, specifically modeled after Sora further solidifying the connection between the realm of sleep and the realm of death. Only the bones are switched with what seem to be keyblades. Regardless, I think you all get the idea. So now let's move on to another aspect of Kingdom Hearts 3 that tilted many keen-eyed players in the climax. What's the deal with Scala at Kylum? In the end portion of Kingdom Hearts 3, 
In order to prevent Xehanort from using Kingdom Hearts, Riku and Mickey concoct a plan to use him as a portal and trap him within the confines of that portal. Of which being Scarlet Ad Kylum. When Master Xehanort is shot, the pinkish-red portal synonymous with traversing sleeping worlds appears. This is also hit home by the fact that the remaining Guardians of Light fly in through a sleeping keyhole after the final battle. These two aspects about Scarlet's conception was almost a guarantee that the finale of Kingdom Hearts 3 took place in the realm of sleep. The problem is that we see Heartless. And if Yen Sid said that they can't traverse through sleeping worlds, it begs the question, how? Is this a plot hole? Well, you'd think so, but this actually goes one step further. Near the finishing act of Dream Drop Distance, Ansem Seeker of Darkness tells Riku an invaluable piece of trivia about how darkness connects to many other realms. Dreams hold our memories. Sleep holds our dreams. And darkness, it holds our sleep. If we align this finding with Chirithi's description of the final world, then this specific chain goes like this. Memories are within dreams, thus within the realm of sleep, knowing that sleep and death touch, and darkness holds our sleep. Think of it like a Russian matryoshka doll. This could not only explain why the portal to Scala is pink, but also explains why Scala is infested with Heartless. If we believe what Yen Sid said to be true about Heartless not being able to exist within the realm of sleep, then perhaps the portal being pink doesn't mean that Scala is a sleeping world, but rather an apparition conjured by Xehanort's distant memories. If the Heartless can't enter the realm of sleep, then, aha, they can go down the chain and enter through Xehanort's memories. This reminds me a little of the door to the Timeless River in Kingdom Hearts 2. Were they actually time traveling to the distant past? I don't think so, because it breaks all of the established rules we know. Also, Riku never mentioned anything about dreams or the realm of sleep, he only mentioned how Xehanort can travel through time. So this could mean that the portal leads to the memory of Scala at the time Xehanort was a child. This might also relate to the Lich Trials, and how Sora traversed through desolate versions of worlds from his adventure. During the Lich Trials, Sora dives into their Stations of Awakening just like a dream drop. If we take what Ansem said into account, that dreams hold our memories, then it stands to reason that they might be able to use their sleep-based powers to trace through the chain and access the memory. This could also explain the similarities between Xehanort phasing in and out of reality in Scala, and also how he did in the end of Melody of Memory. We know Kairi was looking at an apparition of Xehanort, based on her dormant memories. So what if the same thing was going on with Xehanort and Scala? However, this theory has some potential flaws. Lil Xehanort clearly mentions the Sleeping Worlds after Sora defeats the Lich. All that gallivanting through the Sleeping Worlds, and yet you learned nothing. What? Dream by dream. You nearly buried yourself in the dark of sleep, and now you're at it again. <gasps> at it again? I know he was talking about the events of Dream Drop Distance, but Sora is now going on dream by dream once more? Let's just entertain the possibility that the Lich is a special case. But remember how he can summon Lesser Heartless? What's the deal with that? Another possible flaw could be, in order to gain access to the memory, you'd need to pass through the realm of sleep first, seeing as how dreams hold our memories, like how Ansem stated. Well, to that, I have two rebuttals. If Scala is a memory, then the Heartless are also memories. This is actually one of the main plot devices in Chain of Memories, how each world Sora visits in that game has been directly pulled from his memories, along with the inhabitants. If dreams hold our memories, and Heartless cannot access the dreams themselves, then how is it that the Heartless are the main enemy fodder of Chain of Memories? Because the Heartless themselves are actually memories too, just like the people and the worlds. Something very similar also happens in 2.8, when Aqua sees illusions of Ven and Terra in the Dark Realm. <sighs> Why won't you say anything to me? So what are you? A memory among these shadows? Aqua, listen. I promise this is me, but I'm not myself. What do you mean? You're using the name Terra. That means you're seeing me the way that you remember me. But your heart is just painting the picture that it so wants to see. The real me is lost in shadow.
She's seeing them as how she remembers, and they're acting accordingly. The second reason, although perhaps a bit of a stretch, the Heartless are actually in the Unchained State. If Heartless cannot enter the realm of sleep, well, why do we see Heartless in the realms of sleep and death multiple times throughout the series? They literally plague the Stations of Awakening and Dives to the Heart in almost every game. And those are confirmed to be in the realm of sleep. We literally visit the final world at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 3, which is the place where death and sleep touch, and we fight shadows and a dark side. With the sheer amount of what I and many others present on this topic, it just seems that Yen Sid is flat out wrong here. Either that, or Yen Sid doesn't know what Unchained is. Okay, back up. So, if the Scarlet Ad Kylum we travel to is only a memory, then what about the events after Kingdom Hearts 3? Yen Sid clearly tells Mickey to go to Scala. If Scala was originally Xehanort's memory, how are they going to do that now? Well, here's my explanation. When we defeated Xehanort in the final battle, he and his boyfriend Ericus faded away. So in turn, Scala should have faded away too, right? But it didn't. Why? Well now, it isn't a distant memory anymore. The Guardians of Light used the Sleeping Keyhole to get to Scala, remember? Sleeping keyholes aren't only used to gain access to sleeping worlds, but are also used to awaken them, as seen in Dream Drop Distance. Now, the confusing thing about Remind is that Sora is essentially split into a past and future self, so he literally sees himself in the past during his final battle with Xehanort. But note that the Heartless only show up now, in Remind, to the future apparition of Sora after Xehanort was defeated. Now, Scala is in the Realm of Light, but Sora himself is now unchained after abusing the power of waking. So either, one, Scala has now been awakened by the Guardians of Light, or two, Scala can be accessed through a portal to the memory of either Mickey or Yen Sid. If it's the latter, then with the future of the series going forward, pretty much all major characters are using every facet of this very chain. Mickey dives into the memory of Scala, the Wayfinder trio traverse into the realm of darkness, and both Riku and Kairi use their dreams. Heck, even Kairi traces the chain from sleep to memory in her own game, as she uncovers the latent mysteries of her past. If Xehanort here was nothing more than a conjured apparition etched within Kairi's heart, who's to say that Scala at Kylum wasn't the exact same deal with Xehanort? We could digress way further with this, but let's just leave it here for now. Let's try and bring this home. With all this talk of the chain, what is Unchained? What is the Unchained Realm, and what does being in the Unchained State actually mean? Well, let's take a quick look. With what we've already discussed, along with a few hints throughout the series thus far, we only really have so much to go on. First, let's look at what the term Unchained means. To me, it means free or released. You aren't shackled down to anything. In this case, it could mean that you aren't bound to the rules of any given realm. This coincides with what Nightmare Chirithi says when referring to the differences between nightmares and spirits. Unlike you spirits, we nightmares exist to plant bad dreams. That's how we sever our bond and gain freedom. The player then fights off some darklings, and after they're defeated, they are merged with the Nightmare Chirithi to form an extravagant beast. After being defeated, it withers, our bond has been severed, before fading away as it ominously leaves us with a very peculiar quote, I'll see you in another dream. So when looking at Dark Chirithi, who's a nightmare dream eater, we can surmise that 1. The Unchained State has a direct correlation with dreams and the power of sleep. In Quest 425, Ava overlooks the sleeping player and states that Ephema is in an Unchained State and attempting to reach out to the player from the Unchained Realm. Arva then points out that in order for this to be happening, we as the player must be getting close to this realm too. This lets us know, residents of the Unchained Realm can reach out to others via dreams, and doing so means the recipient is closer to the Unchained Realm. This is conspicuously related to how Ephema appeared to Sora in the Keyblade Graveyard, through Sora using the power of waking and transcending the realm of death. This gave Ephema the means to contact Sora after he changed his fate. This leads us to believe that you can still be awake and connected to the Unchained Realm, but only through having entered the realm of sleep and or death. I think these three statements are the best we have right now. So what can we deduce? Well, let's look at how Ephema appeared in front of Sora again. Sora charges the Demon Tide as a burst of light bombards the screen. Time has seemingly halted. Sora is standing amidst the pure whiteness, and in front of him stands Ephema, who offers Sora a helping hand. Sora is then returned to the Keyblade Graveyard as if nothing had happened. 
But now, the light of the past guides the Keyblades of the Fallen Wielders to Sora's aid. So, the main things about this moment were the effects of time and space, and how Ephemer's decision to summon the Keyblades actually came true in the real world. Time seemed to have stopped for Sora, and he was completely transported out of the situation entirely. This, paired with the fact that Ephemer is from the distant past, hints at the possibility that the Unchained Realm surpasses all of time and space. However, Ephemer isn't technically travelling from the past or the future, it's only through Sora's connection with his new Unchained state that he is able to make his actions have real-time ramifications in the Keyblade Graveyard. Ephemer was never physically there, and also nobody else references this ever again which means that they never witnessed anything happen. It was an experience directly targeted at Sora. This leads me to believe that the Unchained Realm is actually something akin to Limbo. Not to be confused with the Realm Between, which is indeed its own realm between light and darkness, but rather an outer realm that is able to freely traverse through all of time and space, without following any of the rules of any established realm. It breaks the chain of all pre-established realms, but at the cost of not being present in any of them. The only way to let others know that you still exist is to contact those who are strongly tied with sleep and or death, thus being ever so close to the Unchained State and the Unchained Realm. Whatever this entails for the series going forward is just too much to put on my plate right now. All we need to know is that sleep is going to be big. With Hizora's connection to the power of sleep and the ever-impending and overlooming gloom of the Nightmare Chirithi, I think Dream Eaters will play a huge role in the upcoming saga. The Nightmare is not over. It never was. My friends, the Nightmare has only just begun. Sink.